all transformed in an instant. The squid on the left is a male. He shows a brownish-red courtship pattern toward the female, while simultaneously showing a white fighting pattern on his opposite side to ward off rival males. As he switches sides, his markings actually flip. Dual simultaneous signaling demonstrates God's engineering supremacy. Underwater symbiotic relationships reveal perfect foresight in design planning. Sea anemones are poisonous, yet God has enabled certain fish to safely cohabitate in their environment. For example, clownfish are designed with an immunity to the anemone's poison. This could not have been inherited, as prior generations would have been killed and gone extinct before evolving a beneficial immunity. The schooling pattern of certain fish is still being researched. The ability for fish to dart with synchronized movements reveals the guiding hand of a grand conductor. Different species of fish have been relegated to dwell at specific levels of the ocean depths. This capability is the result of a specially designed air bladder, which secretes gases from the bloodstream, regulating the pressure, maintaining equilibrium, allowing the fish to survive at various water pressures within a range determined by the creator. One of my absolutely favorite sea creatures is the pearly nautilus or the chambered nautilus. Here's a shell like you might find in a Florida shell shop. And when you cut these down the middle, woo, look at that, all these little chambers inside. Uh, the animal that lives in the last chamber here is essentially a squid. It has lots of little tentacles coming out the front like that. All these little chambers enable it to regulate its buoyancy like a submarine does. Inside that amazing squid, uh, there's a brain, there's an eye that sees the world like we do. Uh, there's a digestive system with salivary glands and a pancreas gland. They have three different hearts. They're as complex inside as we are. And yet, uh, fossils of this kind of creature are among the first to be found. Initial complexity, a marvelous testimony to God's creativity. When I look at the sea creatures that God has created, I look in particular to the fish. They are amazing creatures, starting with their streamlined efficiency, the fact that they are designed to extract oxygen from the water in such an efficient manner, the fact that they have such a pleasing aesthetic values, and also, of course, the great quantities of food they provide for man. Fish have always been fish, according to the fossil record. Yes, fish certainly are an incredible feature of God's living creation. The obvious sophistication, variety, and beauty of sea creatures shout out a master artist created all things for his good pleasure. Birds are among the most captivating creatures on Earth. We marvel at their spectacular colors, their streamlined shapes, and their ability to fly with grace and ease. For centuries, man attempted to imitate the flight of a bird. It was only in the 20th century that he succeeded in controlled flight. To this day, in order to improve the aerodynamics of the plane, man will return to study God's marvelous avian design. Consider some of the Creator's design features. A bird's bones are lightweight and virtually hollow. They're supported inside by struts and honeycombed with air sacs. 
These lightweight bones are designed so efficiently for flight that the bird's feathers usually weigh more than its entire skeleton. Even its beak is designed to save weight, made of lightweight horn rather than heavy bone. Birds also have two strong sets of breast muscles, a large set to control the wing's downstrokes and a smaller set to control the upstrokes. And only birds have been created with feathers. Feathers insulate the bird from the sun's heat, protect it from the cold, waterproof the body, and create wing and tail surfaces necessary for flight. Each feather is connected to a nerve and controlled by a muscle. This precision muscular control helps the bird balance in the air, steer and brake when slowing down to land. Birds, they're just truly spectacularly amazing. Uh, they're well known, of course, for the feather, which is a masterpiece of strength and lightness combined in one thing. They have a uh, little system of barbs, barbules, kind of like hooks and eyelets and Velcro that can zipper together uh, the little feathers that stick out from the main shaft. And they can take their bill and zipper them and unzipper them as they oil their feathers. And each feather along the length of the wing uh, has a slightly different size and shape that's coordinated with all of the others. There's no way <laughs> at all <laughs> feathers could just arise by time and chance. They are marvels, masterpieces, miraculous examples of creation. Another essential element to bird flight is the air-filled bags that lie between the bird's organs. The bird's air sacs are connected to its lungs and during flight air flows through them. This arrangement rapidly feeds the bird's body tissues with life-supporting oxygen while keeping it light in the air. All birds are amazing. You know, they have a, a, a system of breathing that's not found in any other creature. The bird lung uh, is a special double tide system where you can oxygenate air both inhaling and exhaling. Unlike our lungs or the lungs of any other creature, the bird lung has back doors. And it turns out that this is important. Birds do not change the shape of their chest cavity when they breathe. You know, if you saw a bird just land from a thousand mile migration, just, just landed, would you see the chest heave as he breathed? They are stone still, no matter how hard they've been flying, you think, how do they breathe? Turns out that the air is moved through the bird much like a bellows for a fire. These air bags between the muscles, as the bird flies, as it walks, it's, it's moving the air. Such wonderful creatures God made in birds. All of these engineering marvels combine for efficient flight and show perfect foresight in the creation of birds. One of the uh, marvels of birds is their ability to migrate long distances. The Arctic Tern makes it all the way from areas near the North Pole all the way down to the South Pole and back uh, every year. Now, now people can do that in, in an airplane. Well, you've perhaps looked into the cockpit of an airplane, all those switches and dials and levers and controls. And then you have to have ground control to tell the pilot where he's going. And all of that is packed into one teeny part of a bird's brain. Next time somebody calls you a bird brain, say why, thank you. The Lord has equipped each bird uniquely for his role in life. In the service of man, each species of bird has a special area of patrol. Many help by controlling insects. Others remove the carcasses. The finch family is a great weed seed destroyer. The owl and the hawk keep the rodents in check. The sandpiper combs the beaches. The water bird maintains the proper balance in fish population. The heron in frog and snake control. With graceful proportions, amazing aerodynamic abilities, and practical functions, each bird is a testimony to God's wisdom and love. While God provides marvelously for birds, 
Remember that Jesus assures us that we are of more value than many sparrows. The hummingbird is a marvel of agility and grace. The smallest birds, they take their name from the humming sound made by their rapid wing beats. Darting from flower to flower, the hummer poises in mid-air. He has come to sip sweet nectar. The hummingbird has been wonderfully designed to do this. God gave it a small body to move with ease about the flowers, a long, needle-like bill to probe deeply into the flower cup, and a specialized tongue ideal for extracting nectar. God also gave it remarkably strong wings and a sturdy breastbone, which enabled the bird to stop in mid-air and even fly backwards and sideways with ease. Of course, all the hummingbird's features, long bill, special tongue, unique rapid wing beat, would have to work together from the beginning in order for it to be able to gather its energy food and thereby survive. Though the wings of most birds bend at the shoulder, elbow, and wrist, the hummingbird chiefly uses the shoulder. Like a helicopter, it can rise directly upward the Creator's design, however, makes it possible to swivel in all directions, is much more efficient and far more agile than any man-made flying machine. The Hummer's capabilities are phenomenal. When hovering, his wings beat 50 times a second. When speeding straight away, up to 80 times. Its heart beats 21 times in the same second. These tiny little birds have a metabolic rate that just is almost unimaginable. Their heartbeat is so fast it gets into the range of audible sound. Uh, you think of these little hummers that fly, they, they migrate over hundreds of miles. The reserve of food to make this trip, uh, an error of uh, hundreds of a gram <laughs> and nutrients could mean not making the trip. Uh, birds alone would be absolute compelling evidence for a marvelous creator. The hummingbird's nest is a masterpiece of art. The female is the artist. She uses fern fuzz, dandelion seed down, and other plant felts. The exterior is adorned with lichens and fastened with spider webbing. The interior is lined with the softest down available. No one teaches her the art of nest building. It is a God-given ability. The male hummingbird's coloring has no rival in the bird kingdom. The magnificent hummingbird, the broad-tailed, the blue-throated, and Costa's hummingbird are among the more than 300 stunning species. The iridescent colors of the throat and crown are due to refraction and not pigments. Often, these areas appear dark, almost black, but from the proper angle, the iridescent colors seem to glow from within. Every aspect of these remarkable birds testifies to the Creator's gracious provision. Would we say that the hummingbird has been especially favored by the all-loving Creator? No, this genuine love is extended upon every creature. If we carefully study any creature, the Lord's glory will always beam forth. Of a 
Grand Conductor. Different species of fish have been relegated to dwell at specific levels of the ocean depths. This capability is the result of a specially designed air bladder, which secretes gases from the bloodstream, regulating the pressure at in design planning. Sea anemones are poisonous, yet God has enabled certain fish to safely cohabitate in their environment. For example, clownfish are designed with an immunity to the anemone's poison. This could not have been inherited, as prior generations would have all transformed in an instant. The squid on the left is a male. He shows a brownish-red courtship pattern toward the female, while simultaneously showing a white fighting pattern on his opposite side to ward off rival males. As he switches sides, his markings actually flip. Dual simultaneous signaling demonstrates God's engineering supremacy. Underwater symbiotic relationships reveal perfect foresight and killed and gone extinct before evolving a beneficial immunity. The schooling pattern of certain fish is still being researched. The ability for fish to dart with synchronized movements reveals the guiding hand